Thank you, Jennifer. Austin Energy, a greater Texas is facing generational weather challenge to include rain, wind, sleet, freezing rain, cold, and snow. The weather pattern is predicted to linger well into next week with repeated iterations of day-to-day -day changing severeness of weather. As you well know, Austin Energy has experienced outages that started Thursday at about 10 a.m. and we have a forward forecast that calls for even worse weather to include several inches of snow in the coming days. I'm here in part to reassure you that Austin Energy is working around the clock to address this extraordinary and involving situation. Let me reassure you that Austin Energy staff to include operations personnel, line workers, vegetation management, substation electrician, customer service personnel, and many others are working tirelessly around the clock to one, restore electric service as fast and safely as possible. We're also working to communicate the status and provide updates as fast as accurately as possible. We are working to evaluate existing and approaching storm conditions while dynamically mobilizing resources, our personnel, and our critical equipment. And also importantly, Austin Energy is bringing its assets to bear and providing storm res resilience. And this can be seen in a variety of, way of ways. First off, our power production facilities are generating power to meet the electric consumption needs of this community. Additionally, our transmission facilities are foundational to assuring reliable and a resilient backbone electric system. And then also, our distribution facilities or our lower voltage system is delivering local power directly to your home. And safety remains our top priority as well. We do have instances of down power lines and electric lines, down power poles as well. It's important that the public refrain from touching or encroaching upon these uh, down hazards, and we are doing all we can to remove them as fast and promptly as possible. Let's take a look at situational awareness. And these are unique challenges that we have in relation to the storm event. We have freezing temp temperatures, icing conditions on vegetation, and infrastructure uh, that continues to impede our restoration efforts. Additionally, there are instances when the wind picks up, breaking and bending heavily iced tree limbs, and in turn, these limbs are contacting power lines and causing sustained, repeated, and additional outage. As these incidents happen, you might observe that there are fluctuations in our outage numbers or on our outage map at austinenergy.com. Be assured that these circumstances are unique and very situational in that nature. We often refer to these as re-outages or recurring outages. So as an outage is restored, it may reoccur. And this is making it very difficult for us to provide concise and exact estimates for, uh, for service restoration. We continue to ask for your patience as we work through this process. Please be assured we are working around the clock and we will continually work around the clock to, re to restore your service and making repairs to the system as needed. Looking specifically at the Northwest geography of our service territory, it's been a very challenging area due to a variety of reasons. Uh, the Northwest tends to be an area where some of the sleet events have uh, pass through our territory, and so they are specifically impacted. In addition to that, there's very challenging topography in that area, limiting our infrastructure and our ability to access our infrastructure. There's canyons, ravines, limited access, rough terrain. Uh, but again, I'm here to assure you that our crews are working hard in these difficult conditions. As we face those multiple hazards, we are doing everything we can to turn your lights on safely. Understanding that working with high voltage electricity is a hazardous occupation, and we'd ask that you keep those line workers and those people in harm's way uh, in your thoughts as they go about their restoration efforts. I'd like to talk about some details. We are making progress. As of 4 p.m. today, we had 987 customers out of service. This outage event started Thursday evening, and at its peak, we had 49,600 customers out. 
Uh, looking in terms of progressions, Friday morning we had 11,700 customers out. Again, at this time at 4 p.m. earlier today, we had less than 1,000 customers out. But while we are improving, I want to convey that we are urgently, actively, and working safely to try to restore those remaining customers uh, that, that remain out. When we look at our resources, fortunately, Austin Energy has many resources to bring to bear to address these outages. We are current, we are continually evaluating our resources capability. We have added true strength as measured since the day this, this event began Thursday. We've added line workers and we are evaluating uh, adding even more vegetation management personnel. And we are looking at adding a staff through potential uh, mutual aid considerations. In summary, in regard to the, my, uh, my remarks here, these continued and recurring outages are likely to continue as this bad weather persists. As we look ahead, we have cold temperatures ahead of us. We are asking that you also conserve energy to help us reduce peak demand. There will be more to come in that area as that cold front approach. Again, we ask for your continued patience, and I want to reassure you that we are diligently working around the clock to address your, address your energy needs. And with that, Jennifer, uh, with those prepared, prepared remarks, I'm willing to take questions. Excellent. So I will get started with some of the questions that were submitted. So hold tight. Let me get that pulled up. All right. I'm going to start with a question from KU. It is, what is Austin Energy doing to prepare for more potential outages as we anticipate more winter weather in the coming days? That's a very good question. One of the things that we have to have at Austin Energy and we, we do is situational awareness, awareness. We look ahead. So we've got the snow event coming. We've got potentially sleep happening in across midnight uh, tonight. We have crews in advance prepared uh, to address those. We have uh, crews that are staying overnight in, in certain areas close to the response centers. Uh, so there's a variety of things we are doing uh, to prepare. Uh, on the power supply side, we are doing things to make sure our power plants are um, capable and able to, to produce. Um, so there's a number of preparedness uh, actions that we are taking, almost too many to, to communicate uh, here unless there's a specific pointed area that you have in regard to our preparedness. Great. Let's go to question number two, which is from CBS Austin. What is the most challenging thing for crews right now? That's a, also a good question. One of the most challenging things is the characteristic of this particular outage. We are looking at nominally a seven day outage. Um, these, this weather event isn't from forward forecast isn't supposed to break until perhaps Thursday of this coming week. This is a seven day generational event, as I mentioned earlier. So one of the most challenging thing is is associated with what I call re-outages, the recurrences. So on uh, any given hour, like if you go back to Thursday, for instance, uh, when the icy conditions first hit, we may restore 10,000 customers only to have maybe 12,000 customers go out on new outages. And as we chase those 12,000 new outages and restore those, we may have another 10,000 customers uh, that, that go out. Again, these icy conditions, uh, the vegetation that is damaged, broken, uh, compromised, uh, the winds that may come in, it's the re-outage occurrences that make this particularly challenging. If you compare that to a tornado event that might happen, a tornado event is a sustained event that may last a number of hours and it's over, and now you have, generally speaking, uh, blue skies to, to repair. This is a recurring event, and that's what requires extreme patience uh, because this is, uh, to a degree, a marathon as opposed to a, like our January 10th outage was a 24-hour sprint, if you will. And that was a January 10th snow event, I should say. This is a long, sustained, very dangerous situation, and that's one of the reasons I'm here uh, today, to communicate uh, the duration and the severity of this incident, of, of this situation. All right. 
go to question, the next question. It is from KXAN. Has Austin Energy, and you addressed this a little bit in your remarks, but um, has Austin Energy addressed the glitches to the outage maps, which show that the power has been restored to areas that are still without power? Is the current map accurate? The current map is the best available information uh, that the public facing can see. We have made continuous improvement to the outage map. We have enhanced its accuracy. Uh, but at the end of the day, if there is any questions associated with your outage condition that you have ambiguity on, we'd ask that you call Austin Energy. All right, now for the next one. This one is from the Austin Chronicle. Though this weather is notably severe, would you say the city and Austin Energy are prepared, as prepared as we can be for a freeze or ice storm? Could you repeat that question? Is Austin Energy prepared to be as possible for the freeze or ice storm? Yes, yes. Though the weather is notably severe, would you say that the city and Austin Energy are prepared as we can be for a freeze or ice storm? Um, that is a broad question. I would say absolutely we are prepared. Uh, again, you're talking about a once in a 50 year event. Our poles, our infrastructure is designed to be resilient against. Uh, many conditions, high wind conditions, uh, the weight of uh, sleet, um, the weight of snow. Uh, it does have certain design parameters and I'm not gonna get into that detail, but uh, the preparedness associated with that is, is very helpful. Absent that, the conditions would be much worse across our system. All right, we've got another one from KVU. What is the average amount of time customers are going without power? We have heard from people who say they've been without power for days. So do you have data on how many customers are affected by outages lasting longer than 24 hours? We have a very, very small subset minority of customers that are at that 24 hour time frame. Uh, I would say that there, to the extent those isolated conditions ex exist, there's extenuating circumstances. Uh, for example, if a, if a pole goes down and you have a much higher restoration and a much more construction cycle associated with uh, mounting new poles or drilling for new poles, putting up new lines and that type of thing. Uh, so those are unique situations where uh, we may have a 24 hour sustained outage. And for those people that are sustaining those events, um, our sympathies and apologies go out to, to you. Please understand that we are doing everything we can to get you restored. We have the numbers in our control center of who has experienced these sustained outages. We know who you are. We are working to get you restored. Uh, you are not forgotten. All right. Next question is, let's see, from CBS Austin. How many people does Austin Energy currently have working? Uh, that is a, that's a good question. Um, and, and we can provide that to, to you later if you don't have that off the top of your head. We can send that over to you guys. Yeah, Jennifer, why don't you follow up with, with the exact detail? I would say that at any given time, our base crews on day shift or nominally, these are the operation crews that are out in the field. Um, the, the line workers, if you will, 30 crews, nominally 40 trucks. And that's, that's the base levels, and we augment from there. So we have augmented upward from there. Then we have forestry people on top of that. Um, then we have uh, condition assessment people on top of that. Then we have operations control center people on top of that. Um, then we've got customer service people that are uh, available and communicating with staff. So there's various iterations, and uh, if, as you peel the onion back, it is an extensive and broad and, and broad and aggressive undertaking uh, to respond in these situations. Okay, um, the next one is from KXAN. Is Austin Energy changing its response as the weather worse, worsens? What area will be focused on the most? Again, a good question. Austin Energy is continually and dynamically assessing our responses. For instance, we're looking forward at the weather forecast. We're looking at where it might hit. 
Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, a lot of the, uh, the sleet that happened Thursday afternoon was across our Northwest corridor. Uh, so where the system is hit the hardest, uh, obviously we're going to deploy crews there. Um, so we're continually evaluating what our, our, our crew levels are, where we need to call in incremental people, if we need to call them in advance uh, in, in uh, forward days. We're looking closely at the snow event that is coming up. We're, we're already pre-mobilizing in anticipation of what we might need to support that. Um, so at, at the end of the day, uh, we are diligent, not only on the day-to-day, -day, but also forward-looking. All right, and I believe this is our last question. This one is from the Austin Chronicle. What are the highest priority efforts Austin Energy needs to make now to protect operations that keep the city safe? And how can customers who do have, who do, I think, I think you meant who do have service help in, or no, wait, sorry, excuse me. How can customers who do have service help manage demand? Do you need me to read that? Yeah, so how can customers that do have service help manage demand? Yes. One of the things we are experiencing is when, you're, when the power is restored, oftentimes homes are cold and there's a big demand. So we're asking that uh, to help with this inrush current or the inrush power uh, that when you are restored, that if you could um, bring your home up to, to temperature um, slowly instead of rapidly and then conserve energy uh, for the first few hours. It helps us uh, address some of the inrush and some of the, the cold start, if you will. Uh, in, in addition, one of our priorities has to do with we work hard to maintain and to assure that government, um, government offices, prisons, hospitals, uh, power plants, those are the first restored when they go out. So there is quite the hierarchy that we uh, are mandated to, to address. So that is one of the one of the conditions uh, that we have. Jennifer, was there more totality to that question? Let me read the first part just to make sure we got it all. What are the highest priority efforts we needs to make now to protect operations that keep the city safe? Uh, again, I, I think it's a multifaceted approach. We have the power supply approach, keep the city safe. We need to keep our power generation available and operating. Uh, we have to maintain our transmission, our distribution system. We have to keep our crews safe. This is an occupational hazard to be out in the cold and the snow, uh, dealing with high voltage electricity. We need to keep our customers safe as well from down power lines and down poles. Um, we have a tremendous crew of vegetation management that is climbing and uh, addressing some of the, the, the downed and falling tree limbs uh, on our poles. We have to coordinate effectively so that uh, we don't energize the line while one of our uh, personnel may be entangled. It is a very complex, uh, complex operation. And so to the question of what's the most important, it's all important. 